Hi, it's Mary McIntyre here. It is the 2nd of November and it is a beautiful clear night here. Very, very cold, but it's so still that it's almost impossible to believe this is the same place as I was on Sunday when we had that freak weather incident. Come on, focus. Oh my goodness. It is. Jesus. Anyway, I missed last night's clear night because I was too tired. I couldn't resist coming out tonight. I really want to image the Vale Nebula, but it's really high up near the zenith. And unfortunately, the design of my pier means that anything near the zenith, the camera tends to collide with the plinth that I have around it. So I need to wait until that gets down a little bit lower. So I've just swung round to M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, because it's such a beautiful galaxy. And actually, I've not imaged it that many times and done a good job of it. So I'm having a go at that. I've done some test shots and I've got my light pollution filter on there and I'm just doing some 90 second shots. So hopefully the mount will behave. If I push it much higher, sometimes the mount can be a little bit temperamental. Um, obviously being a cold night a lot of people have got their wood burning stoves going so I've chosen a part of the sky that isn't directly above chimneys. I was kind of hoping to maybe have a stab at some stuff near Orion but that's that's the direction where all the smoke's blowing so I'm going to give that a miss for tonight. There will be plenty of opportunities to hit Orion as we go through the winter. Dew band is on of course and um, turned up quite high. That's powered by a battery tank underneath the mount. The mount is plugged into the mains, the camera battery is also plugged into the mains. Well, it's not a battery, it's a mains power lead, but um, looks like a little battery but with a mains power on it. So at least I know in this cold the camera battery won't run out and the mount will be okay. So hopefully the dew band shouldn't pull enough to drain the battery before the end of the night. So I'm going to go back inside and get a cup of tea and leave my telescope doing some imaging and come back out in a little bit and see if I can swing around and do a little bit more of the witch's broom. Bit late for Halloween now but the witch's broom is another target that I think I can do a better job of than the times I've imaged it before. So I'm going to go in and get warm and I'll talk to you again in a bit. Just after 8 p.m. I'm back outside again. It's still very clear up top but there's a lot of fog building up so I don't know how much longer I've got um, but the Veil Nebula is now low enough that I can get it from the pier. Actually it probably would have been okay half an hour ago as well but I was eating dinner so so yeah I'm just doing some test shots so I can figure out the best exposure. I've actually put the Altair quad band filter into the imaging train. My husband's used it but I've never used it myself before so I'm really looking forward to seeing how it works on this beautiful supernova remnant so keep everything crossed that it works soon because it's so cold I'm gonna have to go back in as soon as everything's going. So this is my final Andromeda Galaxy photograph. I'm actually really pleased with this one. It's one of the best I've actually produced. I photographed it a few times in the past, but this one I think is kind of standing out for me. I've deliberately kept the colours very muted. Um, that was a, a decision that I, I made early on. I blended the core of this with one of the, the less processed images because as you stretch the outer regions of this um, galaxy, the core always gets overexposed. So I, that's a blend of a couple of different processes there. But basically this was just 57 lots of 90 seconds that were stacked with 25 darts using Deep Sky Stacker. Processing was relatively simple. I took my time doing levels and curves in Photoshop CS2. I did a little bit of um, kind of star reduction, just not too crazy, just to tone the stars down a little bit. And um, that was one of the RC Astro Tools plugins. And then final tweaks were done in Fast Stone Image Viewer just to kind of denoise and just take the color saturation down a little bit. I know there are ways of bringing out more color in this object, but for this 
this particular occasion I just wanted to have the colour very very muted so yeah I'm really pleased with that considering it's only 57 lots of 90 seconds which isn't a huge amount but this is a big galaxy it's quite bright and you can obviously see M32 and M110 with it as well so yeah let's move on and have a look at how I got on with the Veil Nebula And here is NGC 6960, the Western Veil, vale, also sometimes called the Witch's Broom because it resembles a broomstick. First of all, I mentioned that this was shot with the Altair Quad Band filter. So if you're not familiar with that, what it does is basically combine Sulfur 2 and Hydrogen Alpha into the red zone. Hydrogen Beta and Oxygen 3 go into a blue-green zone. So it's essentially getting rid of light pollution and doing two lots of narrow band well several lots of narrowband filters in one shot basically so conventionally when you do narrowband imaging you have to do hours of data with each filter and blend them together this filter works with a one-shot color camera or you can use it with a mono camera as a kind of super luminance layer so this was my first time using it um, first comment really is I needed way more data um, obviously when you're shooting in narrowband you're getting rid of a lot of wavelengths of light so you're only picking up very specific wavelengths so that means you need a lot more data to get a really impressive picture but this was 34 lots of 120 seconds so the exposure time was a bit longer on this one than my m31 and again 25 darks that were stacked with deep sky stacker and I did my usual processing with Photoshop CS2 and then a little bit of tweaking in Lightroom and Faststone image viewer um, I definitely blew out the main star um, so I need to kind of keep that in mind when I revisit this object but it's really interesting that there is still some not knots of nebulosity around the rest of the area where the rest of the veil complex is I actually had it on the wrong corner of my camera I should know by now but my brain really struggles when things are inverted and I put this in the corner thinking that I could capture quite a lot of the rest of the veil complex and realized I'd put it in the wrong corner so actually I didn't get that much so um, that was a, a mistake on my part but this is definitely an object I'm going to return to and revisit and add more data to um, it needs it basically this is way too little data but you know it was the first time processing stuff with this filter it was quite difficult to get the balance right um, in the colors but again it's just practice and it's the first time using it so it was all new for me so yeah I'm, I'm really pleased with how that looks it's definitely a better result than I've had just doing it without any filters I didn't need my light pollution filter with this setup because obviously the filter is taking care of that for you so yeah yeah, I think it's a really nice filter and I really love some of the results that my husband have had with it. And I think it's a beautiful, beautiful object. So now that it's getting lower every day, I should be able to get out there a bit earlier. So when we next have a clear night, I will definitely hit this object. One of the big benefits of using the Altair tri-band and quad-band filters is that you can use them when moonlight is washing out the sky because they are essentially looking at narrowband stuff and that gets rid of moonlight. So it's a really great filter and um, highly recommend it if you don't already have one. Um, this is not the best advert for it, I'll be honest, because it was my first time using it, but um, it's a great product and I'm really looking forward to, to going back and looking at that again. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.